Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Dean. I'm an optometrist, and today I would like to um, talk about dry eye disease and its treatment. Uh, this is a really prevalent and common complaint from patients. Every day, I would see multiple patients uh, with a complaint of dry eye. Um, and traditionally, you would think that people uh, with an advanced age uh, more complain of dry eye. And it is mostly because several of the, several of the glands important for um, ocular surface or the tear film um, become dysfunctional during aging. Uh, however, right now everyone is uh, staying at home and spending so much time on a computer, uh, iPad, on the phone, um, electronic screen, because we cannot connect with each other physically. Uh, using computers for a very long time increases risk of dry eye, so uh, almost everyone now may have a complaint of dry eye. So what are the symptoms? And if you look at these, you may find you have some of these symptoms yourself. Uh, you would feel dryness of the eyes, uh, there can be irritation, almost like there's a foreign body or a piece of hair inside your eye. Uh, your eyes can be burning, uh, they can be itchy, and even though they're dry, they tear up from time to time, and they can appear red as well. Uh, so the cause of dry eye is because of the poor tear film. On the surface of our cornea, there's a, a multi-layer uh, tear film. And over here, showing several important glands to secrete tear um, onto the ocular surface. The lacrimal gland will secrete majority of the tear, that's the liquid part of the tear. Uh, and my bombing glands, these are tiny glands, uh, secrete oil. They live in the eyelid, but they secrete oil, and this oil is uh, released onto the um, ocular surface. Uh, now, if you look at um, a blown up image of the surface, surface of the eye, you see the cornea, which is the clear part on the surface of our eye. And then you see a thin film, and that's the tear film. Um, if you blow up the tear film, magnify it many folds, you can see uh, detailed components. The current theory is that um, it's an intermix, but mostly of three different layers. Uh, mucin is a protein secreted by our tissue. Uh, it's a protein uh, that lubricates and anchors and holds uh, the tear film in place. Uh, it's most concentrated closer to the cornea, but uh, in, in fact dispersed uh, throughout the entire tear film. Uh, the aqueous, which is the fluid part, uh, that's the thickest portion of the tear film. Um, and on the surface of it is a very thin but really important layer, the lipid layer. As you can see, the lipid layer being on the surface serving a purpose. Uh, by doing this, the aqueous or the fluid part of the tear can be held in place, can be sealed in place. Uh, like you put an oil on top of water, then the water can be uh, maintained there without evaporation. So that's exactly what the lipid does in our tear film. And most dry eye is a mixture of two problems. One, you don't have enough liquid uh, called aqueous deficient dry eye. Uh, two, you have too much evaporation, so that's the evaporative dry eye. In fact, um, evaporative dry eye uh, is the major cause of dry eye. So 70% of all dry eye cases seen in clinic is because of this, uh, because you don't have good quality lipid on the surface of the tear to seal the moisture. Uh, of course, there can be several conditions where people don't uh, produce enough tears, uh, or aqueous deficient, but that's really actually the minority. Uh, the, these images here show uh, what can go wrong if you have the evaporative uh, problem. So as you can see, these oil droplets, these are the secretions from the meibomian gland we just talked about. Uh, those glands, uh, tiny glands that live in the eyelid uh, their opening is right here at the lid margin, and oil is secreted through here. And if this oil become clogged onto the opening, 
so no further oil can come out. As a result, the tear film is deficient in lipid, therefore evaporates very quickly, causing dry eye. Uh, over here is a more advanced uh, problem of the clogged tear or uh, clogged oil gland. You can see it almost looks like looks like toothpaste. Uh, that's really blocking the opening of the uh, meibomian glands. Uh, so how to treat dry eye? There can be so many different treatments. Uh, on this, this is not even a complete list of the, all the treatments out there. And whenever you see so many available treatments, you know there's really no treatment. Uh, that's exactly the case with dry eye. Uh, dry can be chronic. Uh, people can get symptoms sometimes, get better other times, but it never really leaves you. Uh, never really leaves you alone. You would uh, always be having some problems some of the times. Um, so I, I'm going to introduce and talk about some of the methods, some of the treatment uh, modalities, um, and including at-home uh, remedies, uh, over-the-counter treatments, but also prescription. Uh, first line of treatment is actually uh, completely, you can do this completely at home with over-the-counter products. Um, artificial tears. Uh, these are, rather than your natural tears, artificially made. Uh, they mimic the components of your natural tears, can supplement. Uh, the, uh, the only problem with these is that um, they stay on the, on the eye for only a few minutes, maybe 10, 20 minutes. And after that, your eyes may become dry again. So you need to keep applying them. So it's a temporary solution, um, but by no means uh, solve the problem for long term. Uh, over here, you can see the various products, how to select which one that's good for you. I will talk about it later. Um, the warm compress is a really good method that you can do at home. Uh, shown you here is a heatable mask. Uh, I have no commercial interest with any of these products. I will not specifically talk about a certain product, but introduce the concept. And you can look up various products and find out which one you like and which one you want to use. Uh, and eventually, which one works the best for you. But warm compress of the eyelids can be done using a heatable um eye mask like this, it's convenient. You put it in the microwave for 20 seconds and this uh, stays warm for 5 to 10 minutes. Uh, you certainly can also do this at home uh, free of charge by using a, a towel. I'll talk about that in the next slide. Um, so warm compress, it heats up the oil inside of my bone glands. Um, it helps to melt, melt away the clogged opening. Uh, therefore, this actually treats the uh, majority cause of dry eye. Uh, so artificial tears, you're supplementing. You're not uh, targeting the root cause, but warm compress actually is. Um, and lid hygiene, uh, here's one of the products that you can use for lid hygiene. What this means is that you would um, uh, rub along or massage along the lid margin um, to wipe away the debris, the clogged opening of the lid margin. So uh, you can use a product. You can also do this with a, a clean tissue. Uh, so that's called lid hygiene. It's almost like dental hygiene. Uh, you're uh, brushing your teeth every day, but you don't necessarily uh, scrub your eyelid. Uh, where, where the eyelid is really important, it accumulates debris. Uh, dead cells accumulate there. Uh, dust in the environment, pollens accumulate there. Uh, your own proteins from the tear accumulate over there. So they need to be cleaned every day as well. Uh, so this is what you can do at home, lid regimen at home for free. So the lid regimen refers to warm compress together with the uh, eyelid scrub or using just a, a clean towel. Um, you heat, you uh, soak your um, dedicated clean towel with warm water and you can do the warm compress on your eyes for five minutes and do that twice daily. Uh, although this way, uh, usually the heat cools down uh, fairly quickly, maybe after a minute or half a minute even. 
So you need to reapply the heat again to the towel. Uh, so that's why using a, a microwavable heat mask can be more convenient. But if you want to save money, you definitely can do this at home too. Afterwards, uh, scrub along your eyelashes where the lid margin is and remove the debris gently. Uh, now, how, to, how do we pick artificial tears? Um, uh, again, I will not specifically talk about any uh, brand name or any product. I don't have, won't have any uh, conflict of interest in this. Uh, but rather, I will show you principles or general guidelines as to how you can do. Uh, because really, there are so many maybe uh, scores of um, products over the counter. If you go to CVS on their shelves, uh, there's an eye and ear shelf. Uh, and half, at least half of that is dedicated to the eye and there can be so many products. Which one do you use? So basically there are different types of artificial tears. Uh, there's the regular one that's mostly liquid form. Um, it lubricates the eye but um, quickly it goes away. You need to apply it again. Uh, most artificial tears are the regular type unless they have some indication on the box or, or on the label. Um, the next one is a gel. The gel is thicker, so it does not uh, dissipate very quickly like a liquid, uh, watery form of artificial tear. It stays on your eye a little longer. Uh, so those would indicate on the box artificial gel or gel, uh, this word would appear there. Uh, the problem is that um, since it's a gel, it's a little viscous and can blur your vision temporarily sometimes up to uh, 20 minutes or even an hour. Uh, if you're not critically um, con concerned about your uh, sharp vision for a little bit, you definitely can use this and it lasts longer than a regular artificial tear. Uh, there can be even more viscous format, so if the gel does not even work for you, you may want to go with ointment. Uh, these are the two um, so there are not too many artificial tear ointments available over the counter. These are the two major ones. Um, you can certainly find, maybe find other store brands as well. Uh, go ahead and try those as well. Uh, no specific indication that one is better than the other. Uh, but the ointment really can blur out your vision. So most of the time, I recommend patients to use this before going to bed. Uh, then they're sleeping. You don't have to use your vision anymore. And it acts as a, a sealant to uh, seal up your eye overnight. So it relieves the dry eye in the morning. Next morning when you wake up, you'll feel much better. Um, okay, and if you're not worried about your vision, uh, then obviously you can use that during the day as well. It's the, low, uh, the most long-lasting format uh, among artificial tears. Uh, in addition to uh, most of the artificial tears do contain a preservative in them, so that the, uh, the product does not go bad, does not uh, get contaminated or grow bacteria in them. Uh, but there can be preservative-free version of artificial tears as well. And these are usually individually wrapped in a tiny tube. And once you open it, you use it up, or even if you don't, you still need to discard it after 24 hours. Uh, because if you happen to touch it with your eyelid or some bacteria in the air get in, uh, they can grow there. There's no preservative there to prevent it from growing. Uh, so you have to discard it after 24 hours. Um, this is good for certain people who have very sensitive eyes who have uh, reactions to preservatives inside artificial tears. Um, so with this, there's no upper limit of use. You can use 10 times a day if you want to um, because there's nothing in there to irritate the eye. Whereas for other artificial tears that have preservatives in them, be it the watery form, the gel, or the ointment, uh, you only use it four to six times. Do not do more than six times. Otherwise, the preservative can uh, cause irritation to the eye. Um, so you can choose which one is right for you. Um, usually, I, ask, I tell patients you can use the regular ones. Uh, if they don't work or if they irritate your eyes, you go with preservative-free ones. Uh, if they, the effect is not long enough, then you go with the gel and ointment. Uh, whether you do named brand or store brand, 
even named brand, there are so many different brands. Um, and most of these now have store brand as uh, available, so more generic form, uh, much more affordable. It does not really matter if you get a named brand or store brand. Um, you can choose whichever you, you like. Uh, however, if something does not work for you, you may want to go to a different brand or you may want to go with a uh, brand name product and stick with whatever that works for you. Um, artificial tears are over the counter. Uh, there are also prescription medication that's specifically for dry purpose. There are three FDA approved eye drops for that. Um, on this slide, I'm showing two of them. Uh, both are uh, both contain the same compound, uh, cyclosporine. The difference is in concentration. Rustasis contains a less concentration than concentration than sequa, uh, which is almost tw two times as concentrated as rustasis. And rustasis has been out there for a much longer time. Uh, there's the single use vials. These again do not contain preservatives, so they're individually wrapped and you have to discard after 24 hours. Uh, there can be also multi dose bottle, uh, so it's more, um, I guess, it's more environmentally friendly. Um, but you use this two times a day every day, um, and usually it'll take about two to three months before you see an effect. Um, and uh, in the beginning, when people use them, uh, a lot of patients complain about burning and redness of the eye. Uh, unfortunately, those are the common side effects of this medication. So in order to, be, uh, to benefit from this, you may have to use it for two months or three months uh, with some unpleasant side effects. Um, the, the sequel contains higher concentration, um, so uh, um, it's supposed to be more effective because it's more concentrated. But the mechanism of action of this medication is to reduce inflammation. It inhibits uh, a specific type of immune cells to reduce inflammation. It works pretty well for some patients. However, uh, in my experience, and in fact in literature, majority of dry patients um, either cannot tolerate this medication or it just does not work for them eventually. So it's one thing, if it works for you, that is great, and you can use this long term. If it doesn't, it certainly you can have other options. Uh, for example, Zydra is the third FDA-approved um, dry eye medication. This is another eye drop uh, that reduces inflammation, working differently from Restasis, but um, it does work. Uh, so Zydro works a little differently, uh, targeting different different molecules and different pathways, but it also reduces inflammation. Um, and this one seems to be better tolerated than Rostasis, and it seems to be working well for um, some patients, a subgroup of uh, dry eye patients. Um, other than uh, eye drops, uh, we can also, there can also be uh, physical devices that help with the dry eye. Moisture goggles are one of these. Um, and on the left here, you can see something you can wear at night when you're in bed sleeping. It uh, seals off and uh, maintains a moisturized chamber uh, close to the eye. So in the morning, you will wake up without dry eye symptoms. Um, now, some uh, manufacturers are able to uh, make uh, these, uh, this type of chamber goggles into a prescription glass frame. So uh, you can pa patients can wear them during the day as well. Uh, there can be supplement that help with the dry eye, oral supplement, and omega three is known to um, relieve or be beneficial to dry eye symptoms. You can find omega three in fish oil or flaxseed oil if you're a vegetarian, um, and um, usually uh, two thousand milligrams a day is enough. You can do that uh, one capsule um, with a meal uh, and with the two meals. Uh, there are recent studies showing that um, even with um, placebo, which they use olive oil, uh, patients also report improvement in their dry symptoms. But uh, if this really works, even if it's a placebo effect, uh, that's, that's still worth trying, especially when omega-3 supplement 
has other benefits to the body as well. Uh, this is a device that um, doctors can put in your eye uh, called a punctual plug. Uh, in, our, in our eyelids, there are these um, tiny channels where the tear drains to the channel, eventually to the nose. So the idea is to block this channel so the tear can stay on your eye for a longer time. Uh, this works by, we can do collagen plugs, which dissolve in a week or two, and see if this method works for you. Uh, if some people find no difference or actually worse, then we don't put um, uh, any more plugs. It will dissolve by the body, uh, be absorbed by the body, and that's it. Uh, if it works really well for some patients, then we can put in silicone pl plugs. These can be uh, there permanently, uh, unless they accidentally fall out. <clears throat> so punctual plugs work for some dry eye patients, but not everyone. Uh, remember, in dry eye, uh, there's not just a tear deficiency. There can also be uh, inflammation. That's what the uh, restasis and zyro, uh, that's how they work. They reduce inflammation. If you have a lot of inflammation in the tears on your eye, and you block the drainage of these tears, the inflammatory proteins will be on your eye for longer. So that's why it does not work for everyone. And in fact, for some people, it's actually worse. All right, here's another device that, um, um, that actually targets the underlying cause of dry eye, uh, which is the meibomian gland problem. Uh, this is basically a glorified device that targetly um, delivers heat to your meibomian glands in the eyelid. Remember, we do warm compress with either an eye mask or um, warm towel. Uh, they, it turns out, uh, it really, you, you, for heat to efficiently go to the eyelids without damaging your cornea or your skin, um, you can only tolerate so much heat. But this method only delivers heat to your eyelids and to your meibomian glands. Therefore, it's more efficient, more heat can go to the meibomian glands without hurting your cornea and your eye. So lipid flow is very, very effective. Uh, patients report immediate relief of dry afterwards, and in some cases, they can get relief for up to six months. So uh, then you can repeat the treatment again uh, after half a year. Uh, there are now uh, many more products similar to this uh, out, uh, out there in the market. Um, so not just lipid flow, but many, many more options. Um, but I think a common problem with all of these is the, that they're expensive, often not covered by insurance, and can cost you thousands of dollars for even one session of treatment. Uh, not only can you deliver heat directly to the meibomian glands, you can also deliver light um, and uh, pulses of light can liquefy and release the hardened oils in the meibomian glands. So a uh, similar um, target, uh, they're both targeting meibomian gland, but this is using a different uh, thing. It's light, not heat. Um, this method, initially discovered by dermatologists who do, um, do this for skin, uh, for their patients, and their, their eyes become dry, becomes much better afterwards, uh, now developed into um, a very commonly used procedure as well. Again, uh, may not be covered by insurance and can be costly. Scleral lens is a type of contact lens, and this is a contact lens can be used to treat dry eye. Unlike your uh, regular soft contact lens, this is a very hard contact lens. Um, it's really like a bow and it's very large. Uh, as you can see, it sits on the sclera or the white part of the eye. It's not uh, touching the cornea or the black part uh, here directly. Um, therefore, it creates a reservoir. If you put preservative free saline here, and put this lens on your eye, then your cornea is constantly bathed in this um, saline solution, and this is how it uh, treats dry eye. Um, for a lot of um, advanced dry eye patients, um, when a lot of other methods do not work for them, uh, they, they can often find some relief by using this. Uh, but of course, you need to 
be fitted by a skilled optometrist. So, and sometimes insurance actually covers、um, this fitting and the lens material. So that's something else that you can try if everything else fails. And here's a new device, and this is the interesting device、uh, working by stimulation of the nerves,、uh, called a two tier.、Um, you can stick this device up your nose for about three minutes, and it stimulates the nerve in the nose,、uh, causing the tears to come out.、Uh, a little bit similar to when you smell something spicy or you smell the onions, you would also tear up. Of course, you don't have the unpleasant feeling,、uh, burning sensation with onions,、um, and you can use this up to ten times a day、uh, to stimulate your own tears,、um, and it supposedly works well for a lot of people with dry eye. But again, this is a temporary,、uh, temporary way of treatment because the tears that you stimulate to be produced, they're typically of low quality. And your eyes are dry again after some time, so you may need to do this repeatedly, you know, up to ten times a day. The next way,、uh, method is、uh, you have to go to、um, a doctor who has connections to do this.、Uh, this is autologous serum, and they、uh, take your blood,、uh, spin it down, and get your serum and put the serum. Into these tiny vials, where you can use as as tears、uh, on your own eyes.、Uh, so not all eye doctors can do this.、Um, it's often a specialist,、uh, maybe a cornea specialist in most cases.、Um, this is this works better than regular artificial tears because it's your own serum.、It、contains many growth factors,、uh, possibly beneficial hormones that can、uh, work better than just a regular tear. Uh, formulation,、um, and for many people who have advanced dry eye, they they find this to be very effective. Of course, you have to keep using this.、Uh, again, it's a temporary、uh, way of treating dry eye.、Um, okay, so I think that is it.、Um, selected ways to treat dry eye, and I hope this、uh, short educational video is helpful for you. Um, to look at your evaluate your own symptoms,、uh, maybe you can try some of the over the counter and at home、uh, methods and see if that relieves your symptoms.、Uh, obviously, if、um, your symptoms are still there, you are not getting any better.、Uh, you may want to visit your eye doctor、uh, for prescription treatment, more advanced treatment, and several devices that are only available through eye doctor's offices. All right.、Uh, thank you for watching. Any questions or comments? Welcome you to leave、uh, under the comment box, and I will see you guys again next time. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe and like us, and feel free to post questions and comments down below. For more educational articles about the eyes and the health of the eyes,、uh, please visit our website at www.bostoneyeblink.com and contact us with、uh, either email or leave a message on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.